What's up folks, thank you for tuning in. Today I am gonna discuss having glitter in your engine oil. In particular, I have glitter in the engine oil on this, metal particulate, metal shavings, a lot of it on this 08 Subaru that I have. And I'm gonna discuss and get into briefly what has caused that on this particular car and how that's my fault and what it means for the future. As you can hear, it's running right now, but it's not knocking yet. It's just a matter of time. We're on borrowed time. There is no hope for this thing, not without a completely new engine. I'll show you what I found. There is a massive amount of glitter in this oil. And this is fresh oil too. I, I found a whole bunch of glitter in the previous oil. You can see it, see it? It's uh, glitter from metal shavings from the cams, the crankshaft, the main bearings, the rod bearings, could be the pistons too, all of it, any of it. And to make matters worse, all of that was circulating around in my engine grinding things up even further it kind of makes the oil abrasive to a degree it's definitely bad really bad even though i'm changing the oil again i've changed it twice and try to milk a few more miles out of this thing it's a done deal you think your oil filter is going to save you that is only true to a degree after a little bit of contamination that gets in this this thing can only take so many particulates until it hits the bypass there's a little bypass valve in here. Once these filters get clogged full to where oil cannot move through this filter, so your oil filter essentially starts doing nothing. Luckily, I got the highest grade AAA. I got four 200 mile tows. I'm relatively prepared. It's gonna suck when it does blow up though. But it, it's a matter of time. And it's completely my fault too. Completely my fault. Actually, a raccoon did it. This is a really high mileage Subaru, but it would have kept going. It had perfect compression. It had beautiful rod bearings. The oil was never contaminated before until I hit a raccoon that punctured, just put a small crack in the bottom of my radiator. The entire car ran out of coolant and overheated without me even noticing when I was driving it. Once an engine like this overheats, especially on a Subaru where they're already kind of sketchy, it's, it's pretty much a game over. Especially since I didn't change the oil right away. I continued driving it. I didn't even think to change the oil after it overheated. For as many years as I've been working on cars and all the shit I know about them and I've learned about them, I should have done that. That's just common sense. It didn't occur to me though. I was driving my other one at the time too and I would only use this one for a backup. That was my biggest critical error right there. I might have been able to save this engine even after it overheated if I would have immediately changed that oil, but I did not do it. And just a matter of miles before this thing blows up. It's not knocking yet, but that oil is very very contaminated now i could try to clean this out with kerosene the block cleaner that you dump you add to your oil right before you drain it for an oil change and, and try to rinse that whole thing out but it's futile at this point this thing is 240,000 miles it's probably time i don't know what i'm going to do with the car ultimately maybe i'll replace the engine the transmission just went two weeks ago on top of that so i just replaced the transmission it's starting to be a domino effect with this old timer right here. And it all started with that overheating. If your car ever overheats and you get the, the issue fixed to where it's not overheating, change your oil immediately. Don't drive it. Change your oil immediately and inspect your oil. Because when these overheat, your pistons, everything expands. It gets hotter. Metal expands as it gets hotter and it, and it chews up the little bit of clearance it has. Your journals and the clearance, everything floats on a thin film of oil. Now when metal expands, it opens up to where it starts grinding on those journals that, it, that all the surfaces are rotating on, and it's game over from there. That's when you get the glitter like I got. Maybe I'll do an update on this car, record when it does finally fail completely, or keep you updated on it with the amount of miles I'm putting on it. I reset the odometer, so I'm gonna see how far it's gonna go see how much I can get out of it and what some of the symptoms are before it does finally blow up. But it is a matter of time. I know that. If you're in this situation, the same situation, if you're seeing glitter in your oil, you need to immediately start saving. You need to get AAA or some means of towing in line, you know, whether you got friends, family or whatever. Just prepare yourself. Prepare yourself because your car is going to die eventually. Every, every vehicle on the road is on a ticking clock. You just expedited yours if you've seen glitter in your oil. And I highly recommend some full synthetic 
if you haven't put it in there already, some full synthetic with high viscosity. I run at 1540, it gives you a better cushion between those rod bearings. Yeah, we're not supposed to run oil that thick in our vehicles. A lot of them call for zero W20 nowadays or zero W15 really really thin oil but that doesn't protect as well yeah you'll get worse efficiency and worse gas mileage but you'll be more protected so i highly recommend doing that and just set things up don't get caught with your pants down i hope you enjoyed this one thank you for tuning in i'll see you on the next one